Nehal, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? How are you guys? Yeah. Good. Sorry, are you are you a Muslim? Yes, I am a Muslim. Okay. Where are the salams? Uh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, on your mind today? Yeah, I have some questions regarding uh, uh, like Islam only. So. Okay. Where are you calling from, from now? India, India. I've been following your channel for quite a while and uh, may Allah reward you for the job you're doing. You all. I mean, sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, What's yeah. your question? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first one would be like, uh, uh, was our Prophet uh, وسلم, literate? He was, you mean, did he know how to read and write? Yes. No. Like, next, nothing. Next question. No, yeah, uh, he didn't ask, know how to read ask him. Write. Ask him. Yes, sir. The, the proof to which is Surah Al Jumu'ah. Is Surah Al Jumu'ah the beginning of Surah Al Jumu'ah? That's the proof. Yeah, it's in the Quran actually. Yeah, the, the evidence for that. Why but, do you find uh, it difficult to accept that he was not literate? No, actually, there are many uh, like hadiths which contradicts it. Like uh, many, not many. Uh, like which one? There is not one hadith that contradicts it. Not even uh, one. Are you talking about the one where? He asked Ali Radiallahu anhu, show me my name. Sulh al-Hudaybiyya, Sulh al-Hudaybiyya. So that's a name that, that I can agree that that's a name. Like okay. a, uh, anyone can write a name. What 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 hadith are you referring to then? Uh, I'm uh, referring to yeah, hadith e kirtas like where uh, Rasulullah sallallahu was asking for uh, uh, pen. And, ah, uh, the, the, you know which come one? I, uh, come, I will write uh, something for you. Raziyat al-Khamis, the one that the Shia call Raziyat al-Khamis. When the Prophet ﷺ was ill and he said to them, bring yeah. a script, bring like a script and uh, uh, and uh, a pen so that I will yeah. tell you. But to do, to do what? To tell you, not to write yeah. himself. The pen wasn't for him, basically. He asked for the pen. But the, the translation says like on sunnah.com, translation says is it like uh, quoting him, come, I will write. Uh, no, 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 no. He just no. says, "Bring the pen." He didn't say, "I, I will write." He so didn't he, say. Uh, he requested I will for the pen to be brought to him, but mm -hmm. it doesn't say the hadith doesn't say that he is the one who's going to be writing it. Yeah, even if he said, "I, I, I write for you," it doesn't mean that you the one that write it. I should not take it literally, like. No, bring the hadith. Let's see. It. Let's see which hadith you're uh, referring to. Have you got the link? Uh, yeah, it's called uh, Bukhari one more. It's called Hadith Raziyatul Khamis. It's, uh, it's, if you uh, got the link, give it to me and then we can have a look. Just give it. me a second. Yeah. What is your next question? You said you had a couple of questions. Uh, yeah, it's related to Hadith. Like, uh, we do believe that everything written in uh, uh, Bukhari is uh, uh, accurate, right? Like, accurate as in, like, it's accurate in Quran. So, again, no, what no, is no. written in, the but, Bukha in Bukhari? No. The point yeah. about writing, Nihal, brother Nihal, as Shivanazan said, even if it said, bring yeah. something, I will write for you, even if it, if, there's a, if there is a you know, version which says this, it doesn't mean he himself would write. This is a way of saying, I want to write something. And usual, his, his usual practice is whenever he wants to write something, he will call his scribes and they will write it for him. That has been his consistent practice all his life, whether it's the Quran or getting, writing the hadiths for him. Brother Mansour, I can tell you I want to write my biography, but it doesn't mean I can call someone a writer and he will write my biography for me, but I'll say I want to write my biography. Correct. But, uh, you know, the problem with this hadith is like uh, uh, Shia people, they claim that uh, uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they, uh, he like, uh, you know, go, uh, went against prophet's uh, command well no so, he didn't he didn't the reason why when the shia tells you that tell them ali was there and ali was described for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so why did ali not write why did ali also didn't listen to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the answer for the shia you should give them okay as a scribe ali was there yeah 
He's the scribe of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why didn't he listen to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and 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 went and got the paper and uh, and the, and the ink and start writing? But my like uh, like a general question, not uh, you know pointing out anything. Uh, like if uh, Rasulullah says something, like uh, even if he says like go kill yourself, you know, like for to me, it's my duty to do that, right? No, 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 no. Bro, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will never ask you to... Uh, no, no, I'm just giving an example. Like, no, that's a terrible example, example, bro. That's a terrible <laughs> example. <laughs> like, uh, I mean that his command is like, you know, so... Uh, it's like, isn't there a it wasn't there a situation where like the sahaba uh th there was a test of like someone that said throw yourself in the fire and they said the yes, whole reason yes, why yes. he accepted islam is to get away from the fire like no no but only the prophet وسلم, told them had you thrown yourself into the fire you would have stayed in it until the day of judgment yeah it's just but, terrible example but, try again anyway, try again yeah, but uh, my point was like, uh, his command is like, uh, I have to obey whatever it is. So yeah. Look, look, no, 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 look, in the, sah the Sahaba, when they went for uh, Umrah uh, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Quraysh didn't, didn't let them to attend Umrah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them to, to slaughter their, uh, their hadi and shave their heads and they refused. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so upset. And the Umm Salama, she said to him, O Prophet of Allah, go slaughter your hadi and shave and they will do the same. And that's what happened. So so the Sahaba can refuse sometimes, like when, when they all refused, they all refused, even Ali refused to cross his name from the, uh, from, uh, the treaty of al Hudaybiyah. And it was he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who, who, who crossed it. So, so there are, like what happened in Raziyatul Khamis, do you think that if it was something very important to serve Islam, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wouldn't have done it? So it was just something to see. And anyway, the Sahaba knew what he was going to say. They already knew it. And Umar Radiallahu Anhu did it. Okay, you got any other questions, Nihal? Uh, yeah, there is uh, one more, like this will be the last one. Uh, uh, it's like uh, I, when I read the Quran, it says that uh, the, dead, the dead people, they cannot hear my voice, right? But there is one uh, uh, hadith in Bukhari, which says that uh, dead, uh, like Prophet was talking to the uh, uh, dead people yes, of Badr. People of Badr, yes. But dead hadith is... Uh, not correct, right? Even if it's it in, is correct, uh, it is a sound hadith. Why it is not correct? Because I found another narration in uh, uh, Sunan Nisai in which Aisha radiallahu said that Ibn Umar, the, who was the narrator of this hadith, uh, had uh, like he he had a deficiency or he misheard something from the Prophet. He was saying something else. No, no. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When the dad of Quraysh were dead, he went to them. He said, "Ya, ya, Utba ibn Kada, ya Aba Jahl, ya Kada, ya Kada." And then he called them with their names, and he said to them, "Did you find what Allah has promised you? For I have found what Allah has promised me." And when the Sahaba told him, "Oh Rasulullah, they are dead," how he said, "By Allah, that they hear me like you hear me." Okay, what well, you have to understand that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had, had the ability of hearing the dead. And if you want the, the proof to it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was passing by, by grave, two graves. And the people, and he stopped and he said, the people of these two graves, they are being punished in the grave and they are not being punished from like a, a grave sin. One of them, he used never to clean uh, after himself, uh, himself after uh, urinating. And the other one, he used to backbite. So, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, asked from Allah Jalla wa Ala to, to give the support for, for his prophethood. He allowed him to, for certain things, amongst them, to talk to the dead 
and hear the dead. But the Quran verse says, O oh Prophet, you cannot make the dead hear. So. Yeah, but the, the, it doesn't mean it's not in the literal sense. It's, it's not, not in like the literal the, it's sense. Not like the living world, like here. No, it's, it's life kind of, of Barzak is different. I, I, I no, will, no, I will no, Hashim, Hashim, the verse of Quran, it's like giving the example, oh Muhammad, like the dead people, even if they listen to you, they're not going to do anything. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's That's a metaphor, yeah. yeah, it's a metaphor. Yeah, it's an example, but when Allah gives example of something, he won't give example it's of metaphorical. Something. It's metaphorical, it's in the metaphorical sense. Yeah. All right, Nial, we got but, to bring in other people, uh, but thanks for your time. Uh, okay, salam. Okay. Alaikum salam.